Hi students, welcome to HSC Year 12 Chemistry and Module 5 Equilibrium and Acid Reactions. This is video number 18 and we're going to be looking at detoxifying foods. In the Year 11 course we had a little bit of a look at the detoxifying of foods that was carried out by the Ab Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people of Australia um, over thousands of years. They had developed some very important chemical techniques that allowed them to uh, perform a number of different strategies in order to make foods more edible uh, and certainly safe for consumption. One particular example of this is the cycads. Cycad seeds can provide uh, a number of different types of foodstuffs for Aboriginal people, but in order for that to happen, some very important chemicals need to be removed from the seeds, particularly the cycosin. This is a quite complex chemical. It's actually an interesting one for us to come and revisit once we've had a look at uh, organic chemistry later in the course, uh, because all of these uh, things should make a little bit more sense when we do that. So I won't go into the structure for now, except to say that there you can see from the type of molecule that we have, as complex as it is, that we still have ions that can be produced in solution. Now, one of the important things about understanding about equilibrium and how to manipulate an equilibrium is that it also means that if we have an understanding of things like closed and open systems, we can try and continually push particular reactions um, that may reach an equilibrium to continue to react in such a way that we uh, don't necessarily push them to completion, but seek to do so. Two main ways in which we can reduce the toxicity of cycad seeds is through periods of leaching. In papers that are written about the Aboriginal methods for doing this, uh, there's basically a separation based on time. Brief leaching defined as anything up to a 24 hour period and prolonged leaching beyond that. Now the important thing about leaching processes is that any toxin that's present in a solid form, we want to be able to leach out of the um, substance in uh, or the, the outside material uh, into an aqueous form. The easiest way to do that is just to throw it in water, uh, particularly running water. Running water is very important because what's going to happen is that any buildup in the concentration of the ions in the water uh, is going to be carried away. So therefore we're not likely to set up an equilibrium. We're going to continue to remove these. What we want to do is to turn the solid toxin into an aqueous form, one that will dissolve in water and one that we can then uh, rinse away. The differences between brief leaching and prolonged leaching aren't just the time differences, of course. They are often in the amounts of um, substances, the quantities of substances, the concentration of substances that can be removed. A third method that is used to make uh, to ensure that cycad seeds are safe for consumption is through aging. And what I'll have a look at is just a quick comparison between each of these three methods. So the first method is the brief leaching. Firstly, the cycad um, from this genus, Cycus, uh, seeds are harvested. What, they, what happens to them is they are then heated up and cracked, which allows the inside to be exposed. The um, inside of each of these seeds can then be uh, effectively sliced, dried and ground or pounded. In each of the three situations, they will then be leached often um, for a period of up to 24 hours in running water. That will allow, so as chemists, we would understand that certainly these sorts of processes are going to have an increase in the surface area. By cutting them, grinding them, or pounding them, we're increasing the surface area and therefore we are allowing the reaction to occur uh, over a larger surface area at a greater rate. This um, is one method to make these seeds safe for eating. Prolonged leaching uh, occurs where 
I guess what we do is start with the same sort of processes. So a bit of drying occurring, first of all, on the um, heat. Then the seeds are crushed. And then the leaching uh, is carried out for uh, now a much more substantial amount of time. Running water, again, is important if available, but these seeds can actually be left in, in um, small streams uh, or lakes, billabongs, where the water is still. And of course, um, that means that they often need to be left uh, for a much longer time. That, that agitation that, it, that occurs in running water is not going to occur to the same extent in still water. And we're going to need to give it a lot more time in order for those toxins to leach out. Once again, um, once that has occurred, then often what happens with these seeds is they're ground and made into uh, like breads and roasted. The final one is the aging one. Now aging occurs more as a passive kind of process. It occurs where the seeds have been found, where they've been um, lying for some period of time. So that can be under the plants themselves or ones that have been actively buried for some uh, period of time which can then be re uh, dug back up again and at some stage uh, they will be uh, to the to the people edible of course it takes an experienced eye to know what to look for to be able to ensure that what you're eating is safe to eat and again they can just be eaten as seeds or ground into pastes and then um, then roasted made into breads and that sort of thing so uh, these are three different methods that are applied to ensure that the toxic chemicals that are found inside of the cycad seeds are removed and so that they are then safe for human consumption. Each of these is relying, not so much the third one, but certainly the first two is relying on the fact that we can um, enable reactions to occur over long periods of time or at least chemical processes to occur over long periods of times if we can have a solid substance that will dissolve in water and if we can continue to ensure that that substance um, continues to leach out of the seeds. Thanks for watching.